Massage was brought to Japan from China 1500 years ago, along with the healing arts of acupuncture and herbal medicine. Since that time, massage has been one of Japan's primary resources for the maintenance of health and prevention of disease. Japanese massage was brought to the United States after World War II and has dramatically increased in popularity over the past five years. It differs significantly from Western massage in that it uses no oils and can be done through the clothing. Basically, a Western massage requires more strength in the hands and upper body to knead the muscles. In Japanese massage, we tend to use more of the weight of the body, leaning down into specific acupressure points called subo. These subo lie along channels of energy in the body, commonly called meridians, and can be thought of as places where energy tends to get blocked. These points are basically the same ones that acupuncturists use to put needles into to release stagnant energy and rebalance the body's energy system. Pressing on these points has a similar effect to using a needle, only somewhat less invasive. Ama, which is the Japanese word for massage, is an ancient form of bodywork based on principles of Chinese medicine. The Ama technique encompasses a variety of pressing, stroking, stretching, and percussive manipulations with the thumbs, fingers, arms, elbows, knees, and feet. Shiatsu is the simplified Ama technique which is most often taught and practiced in the United States. Presently, there are over 260 schools of AMA in Japan. Hi, my name is David Palmer, and I'm the director of the AMA Institute for Traditional Japanese Massage in San Francisco. I'm going to be teaching you something about Japanese massage in this tape in the next hour. I teach Japanese massage as a form, what the Japanese call a kata, which is a term that's used in the martial arts to mean a sequence of events, a discipline, a form, a structure in which you learn some things about the massage, perhaps about the relationship with the person that you're working with, and perhaps about yourself. That's why this massage is particularly structured in the way that it is. We don't teach massage in this video. You learn massage only by doing massage. The form that we teach, the kata, is your real teacher. Massage can be done uh, on a table or on the floor. We're going to be doing it on uh, futon, on the floor. Uh, most of you don't have massage tables in your house, so this will be more convenient for you. This tape is divided into two parts. The first half is the instructional part, where I'll actually be demonstrating the techniques and the point locations and the sequences that we'll be using during the massage. The second half will be the practice tape for the massage itself, and I'll be doing the whole sequence from start to finish, and it'll take about 20 to 25 minutes, and you can practice along with me. To start out, though, I'd like to first demonstrate a little bit about the nature of the pressure and how to apply it and where to apply it. And to do that, I'd like to demonstrate on my model, Doug, and how to press with your thumbs and with the palms of your hands and with your forearms. The first part of the body that we'll be working on is the back. 
So before we start pressing on the back and massaging the back, let's take a moment and look what's underneath the back first. And I'll ask my bony friend here to help us out. The back, of course, is composed of vertebrae. And off of the thoracic vertebrae comes a rib. There are 12 ribs on either side, 12 pairs of ribs. On top of the ribs are two scapula. The scapula are triangular-shaped bone. They have a tip down at the bottom, and they've got a corner up at the top. And then they move across the shoulder to the shoulder joint. Notice that on top, coming out of the top part of the scapula, is what we call a spine of the scapula. Uh, in uh, common terms, we sometimes call this the uh, shoulder blade. So the shoulder blade comes off of the scapula, also heading toward the shoulder. It's a thick piece of bone. There are muscles that attach to the top and muscles that attach to the bottom. We're going to be working both above and below the scapula. So those are important. It's important to find the spine of the scapula so you know where that is. We're going to be working on the inside edge of the scapula. And then we're also going to be working the main length of points stretching down the back will be on top of the muscle group that sits in this kind of valley formed off of the spinous processes, these parts that stick out. When you're feeling the bony portion of the back, you run it down your own back, and you can feel these spinous processes down there. And then off to either side is a band of muscle. And I call that the backstrap muscle. Actually, it's a group of muscles. There's a number of muscles that run along there. And maybe to help uh, demonstrate that, uh, Doug can uh, show us his back. And we'll look and see where all the different parts are. You can see the backstrap muscle best down at the bottom. If on your partner you can catch the big band of muscle down there, it gets much thicker down at the bottom and has more to support. So where we're going to be working is right on the crest of the backstrap muscle, the very top portion that sticks out furthest. And then as it goes up the back, you can still feel it if you push in a little bit. And you can also run your finger down the spine of the back and feel those little bumps that we're talking about over here. Here's the scapula. Here's the outline of the scapula. The tip is down here. And it comes to a triangular shaped point down there. You can even, if people are very flexible or loose, you can even slide your fingers a little bit underneath the, uh, the scapula there. Uh, here's the inside corner, so we'll be working along that corner. And the upper corner is up there, okay? You can just feel, feel it with your fingertips. The one other point that I want to mention, if Doug had just dropped his head forward a little bit, is if you bring your head down, you'll see a bone and feel a bone that sticks out more prominently than the other bones, okay? That is the seventh cervical ver vertebrae, C7, we call it, and that's going to be a marker for us to use. So you need to know where that is. You can feel it on yourself, and you can feel it on your partner. You need to know where that point is, and that'll help us find some other uh, acupressure points when we're moving up. Thank you. I think that's all the landmarks that we need to understand and know about, so why don't we go down to the futon and actually start pressing some points and learning a little bit about how much pressure to apply and how to apply pressure on the back. The first part of the massage that we'll be doing is on the back. We'll be pressing down the back strap muscles with the palms of our hands. And that's a good place also to begin practicing how to press and how to apply pressure. And to do that first, we need to learn how to control our weight because Japanese massage does not use so much the strength of the hands or the muscles of the arms, but rather transferring body weight uh, into the palms of the hands or into the thumbs. So let's look on the back how we can do that. When we're pressing on the back, we'll have one knee down and one foot down. The knee needs to be back by the hip and the foot needs to be up by the armpit. That allows us to move forward and back, move our weight up. We can reach all the way up to the front. We can reach all the way down to the waist. And it also gives us a smooth transfer of weight, so we don't need to be pushing down with our arms. Our arms are always straight. The elbows aren't locked tight because we want our arms as relaxed as possible, but they're straight in a line. So our shoulders, through our elbows, through our wrists, and if we're pushing with our thumbs, with our thumbs underneath, always form a straight line. 
In the case of pushing, pushing with the palms, we'll be pushing with this part of the hand, across the heel of the hand. By the palm of the hand, I don't really mean in the center. I mean across this portion. So this forms a line. You can think of this as being a line. That line will press on the crest of the back strap muscles and forms two lines to two lines down the back. We're going to start pressing between the scapula, so up at the top, and we're going to end down at the waist. We won't be pressing on the hip bones down here, just pressing with the palms of our hands down at the waist at the end. We'll take five positions, one, two, three, four, five, and we'll rock down easily. Now let me just demonstrate a little bit, just pressing down. This is what it looks like, down, transferring the weight from the knee to the foot, down. The arms are straight, the elbows are straight. Don't lock them, but just keep them straight in the straight line from your shoulders, down, and pressing. You can do the same thing with the thumbs as they come down too. So if the thumbs are in line underneath the wrists, are in line underneath the elbows, are in line with the shoulders, they also form a straight line. And in the back strap muscle, since the muscle runs in this direction, our thumb is going to be crosswise to the muscle so that it doesn't drop off to the inside or the outside as it would more easily if it was, try it, in this, try it on your partner this way and just feel how much easier it is to slip off to one side or the other side than if you have your thumb crosswise to the muscle. And you can also just practice pressing down too. Now you may not know exactly where the spaces in between the ribs are, but don't worry too much about that at the moment. Just practice rocking forward and back and forward and back and forward and back, down. Okay. Now how much do you press? Well, it's really not a matter of looking at a scale and saying it's seven pounds of pressure or ten pounds of pressure or however. We think of pressure in two different types of ways. One metaphor to use, and I think it's a good one, is an elevator. Okay. So the way that you press is like an elevator. It's as smooth as an elevator going down, and it's as smooth as an elevator going up. And you don't stop either at the top or the bottom. Then that way it's like a breath. You don't hold your breath once you breathe in. You immediately turn it around and it comes out again. And you don't let it, after you've let it out, you don't stop breathing, but you immediately turn it around and it comes back in again. So that's another metaphor. So it's like an elevator in that it takes as much time to press down as it does to come up. The elevator doesn't speed down to the bottom and then lift up slowly and it doesn't go down slowly and then jerk back off again, okay? So we want to be going down and up in the same pace, down and up. And in fact, when we're working on the back, we will be doing it to our breath because we'll be pushing their breath out. When we press down, they will be exhaling. So we should be exhaling as well. So when we're pressing down with either the palms of our hands, the heels of our hands, or our thumbs, we need to be exhaling. So now try that a couple of times. Just press down, and as you press down, exhale. One of the things you might want to tell your client, particularly if they've never had massage before, is that when they're getting a massage, that the one thing they want to avoid is holding their breath. If they ever find themselves holding their breath, just to let it out, just to exhale automatically. So now I'm exhaling, and the client's exhaling, and pressing down. Massage is also not supposed to hurt. It's supposed to feel good. So obviously if you press too hard and the person feels real pain, then you've gone too much. You've applied too much pressure. So you need to press just enough until it feels like a releasing type of sensation. Sometimes people may find that to be a little bit uncomfortable, but they don't find that painful. We make a distinction between real pain and the pain of a release or the sensitivity of a release. 
So we want to be able to feel as though uh, the person on the table, rather, or the uh, futon, we want our partner to feel as though they're releasing. Um, and they can tell the difference. So we need to educate ourselves and, and uh, our partners, we practice on each other, as to what the different type of pain is. So you might try pressing in one spot and holding it and just pressing down until they feel they can tell us when it's too much. So maybe, Doug, you can say, just nod your head. Okay, there, okay, <laughs> and then back up. But if I just press down to a medium depth where it just feels enough and strong, and the first time you do massage, and as I mentioned earlier, the only way to learn massage is by practicing massage. When you practice on your partner, make sure that you talk to each other a lot. Later on, after you've gotten comfortable with the form and the sequence, then you can be more quiet and it doesn't have to ha involve so much conversation. But when you're beginning, it's very important to get some feedback, to get some information from the person that you're working on so that you know how it feels to them. You're learning about massage and they're learning about massage at the same time. And you need to be learning cooperatively. And of course, a good way to do that is to be changing back and forth frequently. So when we learn a certain part of the body, We'll try that. Don't just go through the whole tape. Take it a section at a time and then turn the tape off and have your partner go through that section and learn it as well. And then that way you'll both get a good sensation about what it's supposed to feel like. The first acupressure points that we'll be using are on these back strap muscles, as we talked about earlier, all the way running down to this bone down here, which is the sacrum. The place where we'll start is not all the way up at the top of the back, but rather opposite the spine of the scapula. So when you're pressing on the back, you can actually let your fingers drop off the spine of the scapula so you know where it is. And then opposite that point there will be the first point that we'll work on. We'll do this upper portion later, but we're going to call that the shoulder. And when we get to the shoulder, we'll be working on those. It's a little hard to reach up this far when you're working on the back, when you're straddling the back. So we're going to start down here and call the back from this point opposite the spine of the scapula all the way down to the sacrum down here. Between the first, the starting point, and the top of the pelvis, which you can feel once again with your fingers as you're coming down, working down the back, you can feel your fingers stop at the top of the pelvis. There are 13 points. The top ones are between ribs and the bottom ones are on the lumbar vertebrae down here between the vertebrae. Okay. All of them are on the back strap point. So one of the things that you'll know is as you're pressing down, when you reach number seven, you should be about halfway down the back. If you're not, then the next time you go down the back, you're going to want to spread your points apart. If you reach number five and you're halfway down the back, you're going to have to pull your points closer together. Obviously, on shorter people, the points are going to be closer together. On taller people, the points will be further apart. After we do the 13 points along either side of the vertebrae, from opposite the spine of the scapula to the pelvis, then we'll do four extra points on the sacrum. And where are those points? Well, notice that the sacrum is a kind of a delta-shaped, a triangular-shaped bone. These holes may move toward an angle, toward a point, uh, coming in on a triangle toward the tailbone. So they'll be wider up at the top and closer together down at the bottom. You can also feel, if you need another marker, down these points, which are a little off-center on this model, but there'll be a point of uh, spinous processes, just like the ones up here, coming off the sacrum all the way down, and you can just feel off to the side of either of those will be a little bit of a valley. And then four spaced equally down to the tailbone. Let's take a look at uh, those points and all the points along the back. On Doug, again, I put some removable little stickers outlining the points. These four up here represent where the spine of the scapula comes in, so you can feel that bone that sticks out the spine of the scapula across there. And that's the one that we want to feel down with our hands underneath. And opposite will be point number one. And then we've got 13 points running all the way down on the crest of the back strap muscles down to the hip. 
And once again, you can feel the top of the hip bone. You can press in with your fingers, feel the hip bone. This is not on the sacrum yet, so you should still be feeling muscle here, not bone. Then there'll be four points on the sacrum. The sacrum starts right here. We press four points in. Each time they'll get a little bit closer together until they hit just above the tailbone, which is right on Doug, it's right here. So his sacral points are fairly close together, closer together than these points on the vertebrae. That's not uncommon. The last three points that we'll be working on are the ones that come from the side of the back strap muscles below the rib cage. The rib cage runs on an angle coming down and below the rib cage, outside the back strap muscle pushing in from the side inward to the back strap muscle will be these three points equally spaced and uh, above the pelvis. Why is this above the pelvis and this is above the pelvis? Well, the bone, the pelvic bone, runs on a curve. As you can see over here, the, this is called the iliac crest. It runs on a curve, so this one up here will be a little bit higher than that one down there. Let's go to the uh, futon now and actually press these points and see where they are with our thumbs. And we'll also do the opening sequence of the massage as well, too. Now we'll start the actual massage and I'll walk through it once so you can see how the points get pressed and then you can practice it yourself. At the beginning we'll be opening spine below the scapula with your fingers, the spine of the scapula out here. Opposite that is where your palms will start to press. Pressing down five positions, one, two, three, Remember to breathe out as you press down, four, and five. And repeat that, one, two, three, four, and five. Then with the thumbs, we'll go down the back strap muscles, find the points opposite the spine of the scapula, point number one, skip a rib, two, three, four, five, six, seven, remember that should be halfway down, eight, nine, you're just rocking back and forth, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, then keep going only this time, instead of putting your thumbs crosswise to the muscle, we're going to go down to the sacrum and pressing on the four points on the sacrum. So our fingers will be behind, our thumbs will be pointing toward his head and pressing down, two, three, and four. Okay. Then you repeat that whole sequence, one through thirteen and one, two, three, four. Then bring your foot back to the hip so that you can clear your elbow out to the side and press the three points outside the back strap muscle. So here's the band of the back strap. Feel below the ribs. Here's the rib coming down. Feel below the ribs. Catch the edge of the back strap muscle from outside and press in. One, two, and three. Again, one, and two, and three. Then the next thing we're going to be doing is working on the hips. So we'll demonstrate a little bit more about where the hip points are. On the hips, we're going to be pressing three different positions. The hips bones are actually three different bones. Uh, the top one, which we're going to be pushing against, is called the ilium. And as I mentioned earlier, the top of the ilium is called the iliac crest. We'll want to find that on our partner and on ourselves. You can actually feel in the front, you can feel the tips of the hip bone up here and find that on yourself. And then just follow it back and you follow the hil iliac crest over across the top as far back as you can feel it. You should be able to feel it pretty far to the rear. Underneath that, the gluteal muscle group is contained, the buttocks is contained uh, on top of the hip bones, on top of the ilium, 
and we're going to be rubbing in a circular motion in three positions along, along the lower edge of the ilium. So it's definitely on the gluteal muscle, but it's on the lower edge. And we'll be doing a circular rotation in three positions just behind the front hip bone there, okay, then straight back in one position, and then straight back and down behind it. Okay, so it's more opposite the uh, sacrum down here, almost off of the ilium. Now let's look on Doug and see where those points are. Okay. Here's the front tip of the hip, and you can just follow with your hand along the crest. See how high that comes up on him? And it curves down to the back toward the sacrum. Below that is where we want to be. So we plant our heel of our hand below that and rub with the heel of the hand in a circular motion. In first position, pull it straight back for the second position and then down slightly and, and in for the third position. So it forms kind of a little arc around one, two, and three. Let's go to the futon and see how that works in practice. So after we've finished pressing the three points on the side of the back strap muscles, slide your hands down to just below the iliac crest and rub with the heels of the hand. Keep your elbows wide again. First position, two, three. Bring your heels of the hand up. One, two, three. It's a circular motion three times and then in and down. One, two, three. Repeat. One, two, three. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Next, we'll go down to the leg. Working on the back of the thigh, we'll be using our forearm, very close to the elbow here. Our elbow will be to the inside. Our forearm will be perpendicular to the leg. Not turned sideways, but straight across the leg. We'll start at the gluteal crease below the buttocks and move all the way down to the knee, at the crease of the knee. Some people have very sensitive knees, so be careful when you press on the knee. Don't press ever very hard. Always press much more lightly than you do on the rest of the back of the thigh. The back of the thigh is very strong muscles, so you can press fairly securely. Always check with your partner and make sure the pressure is appropriate. If people have problems with their knees, you may want to put a little cushion or pillow underneath the ankle and raise the knees up and that will probably reduce any discomfort that they may feel. So with the elbow to the inside, pressing down on the forearm, we're going to do direct pressure straight down one, two, three, halfway down, four, and then very, very lightly on the back of the knee, five, just barely touching it. Go back up and press again the second time, one, two, three, four, and lightly is five. Notice where my other hand is. It's down across from the knee. My knees are across from the hip, and I can do that same rocking motion we're talking about on the back, back and forth, putting the pressure down. Try and keep your shoulder on top of your arm. Don't press down with your shoulder going further and further away from where your elbow is, your arm is. You always want to keep your shoulder on top. So just rock yourself down, move yourself down. The second technique that we're going to be using is also with the forearm, but it's a rolling motion, almost like a rolling pin. Where you press down and stroke three times on the, on the same position. One, two, three. Then you move down the second position. One, two, three. The third position is in the middle of the thigh. One, two, three. Fourth, two, three, and then very lightly on the back of the knee, one, two, three. Again, up at the top, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, middle, two, three, and down on the back of the knee for the fifth one. Okay. Now we're going to move down to the knee and work on the same techniques on the back of the calf. So our knees are opposite our partner's knees, our hand will be opposite the ankle. We're moving from the top of the calf down to the Achilles tendon. Don't work on the knee this time. We're starting below the knee at the top part of the calf muscle. 
Let's stop for a moment to take a look at this calf muscle. Maybe Doug could raise his leg up. See how it bulges out here? He's tensing his calf muscle. It's called a gastrocnemius muscle. It starts up in the knee. Actually, it attaches up in the upper leg. It comes down. So we're going to be starting right at the beginning of the belly of this muscle. And then about halfway down is where it ends. So the second position will be a quarter of the way down, halfway down the belly of the gastroc muscle. Third position will be halfway down the whole length of the calf, which is just below the belly of the muscle. Fourth position, halfway down to the Achilles tendon, and the last position will be on the Achilles tendon. So let you put back down and get in position with your knees opposite his knee, pressing at the top of the calf, not on the knee, straight down, one, two, three, halfway down the calf, four, and five on the Achilles tendon. At the top again, it's one, two, three, four, and five. Now do the rolling press motion with the forearm again. One, two, three, second position, two, three, third, halfway down, three, fourth, two, three, and fifth, right on the Achilles tendon. You may find that your partner's calf is, has a lot of sensitivity into it, so re, in it, so respect that, please. Down in the Achilles tendon generally is not so sensitive, so you can press a little bit harder on the last point. The first three points in particular may be very sensitive, so always get some feedback from your partner as you're working. The third technique that we'll be using on the calf is the rolling squeeze. And to get ourselves in position for that, we need to turn sideways to the lower leg, in the middle of the lower leg, then we're going to squeeze with our fingers. Now let's look at this technique. It's a little bit complicated, more complicated than it looks. This is what it looks like. It's a one, two, three squeeze again. Two, three. But notice that the fingers are not grabbing like claws. They're flat. The four fingers are flat, and even the thumb is flat. So actually the notion is, and the sensation is, that we're squeezing the muscle away from the bone. See how those fingers are flat and the thumb is flat here? So it's not claw grab. That won't feel very comfortable. Squeeze the muscle away from the bone. Then you bring it around toward you, release it, squeeze it again, bring it around, release it, squeeze it, release it. One, two, three. Second position, one, two, three. Third, one, two, three. Fourth, two, three. On the Achilles, two, three. Fingers are still flat. Notice on the Achilles that there's not much skin that you're grabbing, or bone or muscle rather, that you're grabbing. Up here there's a lot, so your fingers, your whole hand is curved around tightly as far as you can reach. Down here it becomes less and less and less down to the Achilles. You'll repeat that, take it from the top, one, two, three, second, two, three, halfway down, two, three, one, two, three, and on the Achilles, two, three. That concludes the sequence on the calf, the three techniques that we use on the calf. Now we're going to move down to the ankle. There are two bones sticking out on either, either side of the ankle. They're actually part of the two bones in the leg. We're going to squeeze just below the ankle bone on both sides, one side with the finger and one side with the thumb over here, finger and thumb and squeezing twice. Now to make it a little bit easier, we'll bring our other hand in and squeeze both of them, one on top of the other, both sides, one and two. Then we're going to go down to the foot. So lift the foot up and slide yourself down below and you can just rest the foot on your leg back here. Squeeze the heel, the outside of the heel, with the pads of your hand, the heel of your hand to the heel of your partner's foot. Interlock your fingers, squeeze together once, squeeze together twice. Next we'll move down to the foot. On the foot we'll be pressing five lines in the back of the foot, starting at the bottom of the heel, this part down here, and ending at the bottom 
of the pad of the foot. So the pad of the foot comes down here, the heel comes down to there. We're going to be pressing in between those two lines. Five lines from there all the way down. And we'll start on the inside line, and we'll do five positions on each line. First line is in the arch of the foot, one thumb on top of the other. Pressing down one, two, three, four, five. And then repeat, one, two, three, four, five. Second line, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. In the middle line, one, two, three, four, five. Press, two, three, four, five. Fourth line, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And the outside line, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. After we finish those five lines, let's press on the pad of each of the toes individually, pressing down one, two, three, four, five. Just catch the edge of the bones and repeat one, two, three, at each toe, four, and five. Then we're going to stretch the foot up, the whole leg. You can bring this leg up to give you a little bit of support as you push the foot down to the hip, pressing down. Now some feet will go very far, maybe only your knee will bend that much. Do not ever overstretch. Any of the stretches that we do in this massage, we've got to be very careful that we only go as far as the limit of the person that we're working on. So check with them, particularly the first time that you work on them. Check and say, is this all right? Is this more or less than is comfortable for you? Whatever it may be. So on this stretch, we just stretch with our palms of our hand, cupping around the top part of the foot. Don't do it down by the ankle or you won't get the full stretch of the foot in these muscles up in the front of the leg. Rather, stretch against the top part of the foot down to the hip. And the st second stretch we can do is with the hands on the bottom of the foot. And now we're going to stretch the foot down to the floor, straight down into the knee. You won't hurt the knee this way. Just press straight down. And what are we stretching out? We're stretching out the, stretching the Achilles tendon out here. Just pressing down in the calf. Bring the leg back. Straighten it out. And as you straighten it out, lift the knee off to let the knee reposition itself. And then set it down, lay it down flat. And then you're ready to go to the other leg and work on the other leg. Before we look at the points on the shoulder, I'd like to introduce you first to one other bone, and that's the clavicle in front. We commonly call it the collarbone. It's this S-shaped bone that sits on top of the shoulder, and it joins to the corner of the shoulder out here. Notice how it comes along with the spine of the scapula to form a triangle at the tip of the shoulder. Let's look at that on Doug, see where that is. Here it's attaching up in the front, comes around, curves out, goes out to the shoulder. Feel it on yourself, find that bone, and then feel back where it connects into a triangle at the tip of the shoulder, out here, with the spine of the scapula in the back. That's a point that we're going to be pressing on, so you should become aware of that on yourself and on your partner. And now let's look where the other lines are. I've diagrammed them out on Doug's other shoulder. The first line runs across the crest of the trapezius. It's three points, three positions. The first point is right next to the neck. The second point is about a third of the way out that line. And the last point is out of the corner, the point we're looking between the angle of the clavicle in front and the spine and the scapula in the back. That's line number one. Line number two goes down the back on the same crest of the trapezius that we worked on when we're doing the back points, 13 points down here. Only now we're going to be starting opposite C7. Remember C7? We talked about that when you tilt your head forward, that big bump, and then tilt it up. Opposite that is the first point of the shoulder line, the second shoulder line. Then we're going to space them out between the ribs as we go down five positions down the back on the crest of the trapezius. Go down that line two times. The second line on the shoulder runs down the back strap muscles where we were working before when we did the 13 points down to the sacrum. 
This time, however, we're going to start higher opposite C7. Remember we talked about that earlier, where the head is tilted forward, it's the highest bone that sticks out, and opposite that is the first point of the second shoulder line. Space them a rib apart, just like we did on the rest of the back strap muscles, and do five points straight down. The third line is on the inside border of the scapula, five more points. The first point starts at the upper corner of the scapula. Here's where it turns the corner. So right at the corner is the first point, and then four more points spaced out, again, between the ribs as you go down along the side of the scapula. Don't push right on the scapula. Make sure you're off the scapula, pushing into the ribs, or in between the ribs, actually. The fourth line runs across the top of the spine of the scapula, that bone that sticks out up here. We've got three points equally spaced. The last point is the same last point as on the first line that we did. And the other two points are equally spaced across the top of the spine of the scapula here. So you're not pressing into the spine of the scapula, but on the top of it, one, two, three. That's the fourth line. Now we'll look at these same points down on the futon, and we'll look and see how we position ourselves and press those points. Now we're going to start the shoulders, and we'll start with a palm press. I'm going to do some demonstration with one hand, even though we'll be doing both shoulders at the same time, so that you'll be able to see how one hand operates, the position of one hand, and then we'll look at the body and see how the body movement goes. The first part is pressing with the palms out the shoulders, just in three positions, next to the neck, halfway out, out of the corner of the shoulders. Pressing into the top of the trapezius with the heels of the hand, one, two, and three. And repeat that, both shoulders, one, two, and three. Then you do the same thing with the points, with your thumbs. I'll just show it on one side. Pressing in on the first line of points that we demonstrated earlier, next to the neck, one, two, a third of the way out, and then for the last point, the one that's in the triangle, turn your thumb sideways so that you can fit in as close to the bone as possible without being on the bone, pressing in for three. Go back to the first one, one, two, and three. You do that with both thumbs, like this. One, two, three. Second time, one, two, and three. Then we're going down the second line, down the back strap muscles. This time we'll turn our fingers pointing toward the feet, our thumbs pointing toward the head. They don't need to be sideways because the back strap is not really big enough for you to slip off of it yet. Plus sometimes you'll find that the scapula is very close to the vertebrae and you can't really fit in sideways. So point your fingers down, point your thumbs toward the head, and we're going to press down on these points, one, two, three, four, five. We use the rocking motion. Let me do it with two thumbs and you can see how the rocking happens with my body. It's a good idea to have one foot up and one knee down so you can rock forward. One, two, three, four, and five. You repeat that. One, two, three, four, and five. That's the line number two. The third line is the one that goes around the border of the scapula. It starts up at the corner of the scapula up here. Our thumbs will be pointing in the same direction, fingers down, thumbs away, except that the scapula in this position with the arm up has rotated out slightly. The bone moves slightly to the side. So as you come around the corner after the first point, come off the corner, turn your thumb slightly so that it's in line with the side, with the border of the scapula, down in that direction for the last four points. So the first point at the corner, start down, one, and turn it around, two, three, four, and five. Let's do both of those together. Rocking forward, it's one, two, bring your weight on top, three, four, and five. Again, one at the corner, two around the corner, turn the thumbs, three, four, and five. The fourth line is the one that's above the spine of the scapula, which is right here, and moves 
out in three positions, the last one being the same point that you did in the corner of the shoulder on the first line. You're going out one, two, three. So once again, your thumb is following the line of the spine of the bone, of the spine of the scapula. One, two, and three. Let's do that together, just pressing in one, two, rocking forward, and three at the corner. One, two, and three. And that finishes the shoulder sequence, and now we'll move on to the arm. In the upper arm, there's actually three muscle groups, and let's look at those. We're not going to be pressing into the bone at all on Doug. The first muscle group is the deltoid. It runs right out the side of the arm, and it's shaped like a delta. It comes to a triangle to a point here. It's wide at the top, and we're going to take three positions. We're going to be doing rolling squeezes rather than thumb presses or palm presses on the upper arm. We'll take three positions on the deltoid for rolling squeezes. The second muscle group is the tricep, which is at the back of the arm. You can just kind of grab the whole muscle away, squeezing it away from the bone. We're going to take three positions on the tricep at the back. In the front is the bicep, and we'll take three positions on that for a rolling squeeze, but not right away. We're going to do that when we work on the front side of the body, not in the back side of the body. So let's go to the first two muscle groups and the back side of the lower arm for this next section. So for the rolling squeeze on the deltoid, what we want to remember is to get our thumbs underneath far enough because the deltoid comes all the way to the front. So make sure you scoot your thumbs underneath there. And then the three positions will end right at the tip of the deltoid. Don't go end up way down on the bicep here. We're just doing the deltoid now. It comes right down to the tip. So start very large grip. One, two, three. Second position, one, two, three. And third, just a little bit at the tip, one, two, three. Notice how just a small amount of muscle I have in my fingers. Keep the fingers flat on both sides in the rolling squeeze. Repeat, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Onto the tricep. Scoot yourself up. This time your fingers go way underneath from behind and squeeze the muscle away from the bone in three positions, one, two, three. Three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Again, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And now let's go on to the lower arm. On the lower arm, the first line, as I mentioned before, we're go pressing directly into the side of the bone, all the way down to the wrist. It'll start at the end of the crease of the elbow, right here. And if you notice, there's a kind of a big muscle that sticks up. We'll go down over the top of that muscle, pressing into the side of the bone, all the way down to the wrist. And the last point is in this little cavern, this little hole at the end of the wrist. And if you hold your finger and thumb on either side of the wrist and move your hand up and down, you can feel where the wrist joint is. You want to be right dead in the middle of the wrist joint. The second line will be down between the two bones that we talked about earlier, the radius and the ulna, starting at the end of the bones and going all the way down to the middle of the wrist. And if you press in on the back of the wrist here, you'll feel, and wave your hand up and down, you'll feel a big hole. And that'll be the last point on that line. Five points on each line equally spaced. Let's see where they are on Doug. You can bring your knee to the outside and the hand to the inside. For the first line, we want to turn the thumb up. For the second line, the hand will be flat. So let's turn the thumb up for the first line. The first point in the, at the end of the elbow crease will be pushing toward the elbow, not across the upper arm, not across the lower arm, but diagonally into the elbow. And we'll be running along this muscle down to the hole at the side of the wrist. Five points. One, two, three, four, five. Again, one, two, three, four, five. There's not as much muscle down at the end of this line as there is at the top, so press a little lighter as you get down closer to the wrist. Then turn the hand down, and then in between the two bones, 
starting just below the elbow, pressing one, two, three, four, five in the middle of the wrist, that hole in the middle again, one, two, three, four, and five. Then we're going to squeeze the wrist from both sides with our finger and our thumb once and twice. You may even feel the bones pulling away from each other as you squeeze. And then we're going to spread the back of the hand between the heels of our hands. So put your wrists together, your fingers underneath, and spread the back of the hand out. Once, out, twice. Then with the sides, the outsides of your thumb, place them between the finger bones, the bones in the hands, these are called the metacarpal bones, and slide them down all the way to the webbing. This is the webbing of the fingers down here. Make sure you slide them all the way down. It's quite an exquisite feeling if you do it all the way to the end, twice. And then there are two inside metacarpals, the ones that come into these fingers in here. Let's slide our thumbs between the metacarpals on the inside once and twice. And the last thing we do on the back of the hand is press an acupressure point that's between the first metacarpal and the second metacarpal, right on this bulge here. Just press it with your thumb twice. It works pretty well if you come in between, your, put your hand between the thumb and the first finger, although you can do it out here as well too. Then we're going to do an arm stretch. And the arm stretch, we'll move ourselves out and holding the elbow slightly, just pull the arm away. Hold on to the back of the hand. What I do is I put my thumbs parallel on the back of the hand, so I'm holding on to the, not onto the arm or onto the wrist, but actually holding on to the hand here. Place the thumbs parallel. Just lean back a little bit and stretch the arm out and vibrate it a little to pull the arm in the shoulder socket. Now, once again, this is a stretch. So for some people, the stretch may be just a little bit too much and you may not be able to do it comfortably for them. You can leave it out. If it isn't comfortable for the person that you're working on, don't force it. For some people, it'll just be a very light stretch. And some people, um, you can do it a little bit more vigorously. For Doug, I can keep the arm in a straight line with his body, stretching it out and vibrating. Hold the elbow, put the arm back, and now we'll move on to the neck. Now we'll do three lines on each side of the neck. The lines will start at the base of the skull, so your thumb will be pressing right alongside the base of the skull. This is called the neutral ridge up here, and that's where a lot of the muscles from the uh, shoulder and the back attach is along there, so we'll press along the attachment points. But the lines will go straight down to the shoulder, and they'll follow some of the muscles straight down to the shoulder. Three lines working their way out if we pick three points to start from, not in the middle, but off to the side. We don't want to be pressing on the middle because of, we'll be pressing right into the vertebrae that back there. We want to be pressing into the muscles. So start off center on each side, one, two, and three. Now let's see where those lines are on Doug. So here's the base of his skull up in the hairline up there, and you should Always just feel the muscle, pushing into muscle. You don't want to be pushing into bone, so your thumb will be alongside the neutral ridge along the skull line up there. Three lines straight down, one. And you can actually feel the crest of the muscle group. This is still what comes from the back strap muscle into the trapezius group up here. And on that first group, pressing down, you can feel that on yourself. And over to the front a little bit more, second line down, all the way to the shoulder, third line down, a little bit more in front. Now the problem is, is that his face won't be straight forward. It's going to be turned to the side. That produces an angle on each of these lines, and it's a fairly steep angle. So the diagonal will come from way back here, across to the front, down to the shoulder. And the second line, right across, and third line, all the way down across. So there's a fairly steep angle there. Let's see what that looks like down on the futon. Now when you look at the neck, you'll see some creases along there. Don't worry about those. Be more concerned that you're not pressing into the vertebrae, which comes on an angle across here up to the back of the head. 
this angle. So this is the angle that you'll be working from, is approximately across. It's a fairly steep angle, and it goes over to the shoulder. Don't get too far up here, of course, because you don't want to be pressing into the uh, trachea, blocking their air breathing passage. The points will be five points on each line, pressing straight down to the floor. One, two, three, four, five to the shoulder. Repeat, one, two, three, four, five. Second line, one, two, three, four, five to the shoulder. One, two, three, four, five. Third line, one, two, three, four, five to the shoulder. One, two, three, four, and five. Then we turn the head over, and when we ask the client to turn their head over, we always help them by holding our hands and helping them move their head so they know exactly what we want them to do. So turn your head, please. And that exposes the other side for the neck. And we do the same thing on the other side, three lines down, two times each line, five points each line. And then you move over, and start on the other arm, on the deltoid, tricep, and lower arm, ending with the stretch. To close the back side of the body, we've just finished the right arm with the stretch, and the little shake, and bring the arm back in. Now we position ourselves above the head again, and keep your one foot up and one knee down position. Press open the tops of the trapezius, as we did at the beginning of the shoulders. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now we're going to do a rotation below the spine of the scapula. We haven't touched here yet. So put the palms, the heels of the hand, just below the spines of the scapula on both sides, and rub in a circle. One, two, three. And again, one, two, three. Now to close the whole backside, we're going to press down the same 13 points that we did when we opened the backside. And we'll bring our foot past the arm to give us enough leverage to reach all the points from the shoulder down to the sacrum. Remember the first point is opposite the bottom of the spine of the scapula. So find that with your fingers, pressing into point number one. Rock forward into one and two and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, halfway down, then eight, and nine, and 10, 11, 12, and 13 above the pelvis. Turn your thumbs pointing to the Bottoms of the feet now for the last four points on the sacrum. One, two, three, and four. Then we're going to do two percussions that we haven't done before. These percussions are done on the back strap muscles in a clockwise direction, going down, coming back up, going down, coming back up. The first percussion is with the hands, praying hands pushed together hacking down, and you're going to be hitting just on the tip of the little finger. So you can try it on yourself first if you want, perhaps on your leg, so you know what it feels like. Keep your elbows out, keep your fingers spread apart, and hands together. Fingers spread apart, hands together, and you're just rotating around your wrist like that. It's not with the arms, it's with the wrist. Okay, elbows out. And that's how we're going to go down the back. One side, cross over, come up the other side. Down and up, twice. The second percussion is a cupped hands percussion. We put some air in the palms of our hands, keeping a little bit of air pressure in there. Fingers out straight, and with the wrists again, we're just going to flop the wrist down and push that air out, it makes it kind of a cloud-like sound, pushing out, and hitting just on the back of the hand, not on the elbows and not on the wrist. But the wrist is bending. It's not, once again, with the arms going up and down. It's just with the wrist flopping down onto the back. 
And we'll do that. Down one side, up the other side. Down and up. Then zipper it up back and forth going down and end in the small of the back with a cupped hand percussion that sounds like that. Don't flatten the hand out. It'll sound like that, a slap. But cup it. And as you do that, you can ask your partner to turn over, please. Starting on the front side, we're going to be working on neck stretches first. The first neck stretch we'll do is kind of like bridging the neck. Our fingers will be on either side of the vertebrae, underneath the neck, lifting up, pulling toward you, and setting down. So the first thing you do is find the point where you lift up and the neck forms a V underneath your fingers. So you stretch it up as high as you can, taking the, all the weight into your fingertips, then pulling it toward you and setting the neck down. Bringing your fingers back, lifting up, stretching forward, lifting down, up, forward and down. Your fingers are not sliding across the skin, they're sliding the skin over the bone underneath, on either side of the vertebrae. So don't slide them across, pull the skin over. Lifting up, pulling back, setting down. Up, back, down, three, four, and five. Repeat, one, two, three, four, and five. The second stretch, you can slide the head to the side and then cup your hand underneath the back of the skull, lift the head up, cup the shoulder. This is the cross arm stretch on both sides. And then with the head resting against the back of your arm, not against the neck here, but you want it against the skull, just raise your arms up and stretch the back of the neck forward. If it doesn't go too far, that's fine, just as much as the limit of the person can tolerate. And then bring the head back down, cupping once again behind the skull and the top of the shoulder. Not up the front of the shoulder, this is the front, you want on the top of the shoulder. Hold the shoulder down and stretch the head with the face pointing straight up in the air. Stretch the head to the side, you're stretching out the top of the trapezius muscle on the shoulder there. You can see it over on this side, change hands, hold the shoulder, and stretch to the other side. These are just one stretches in either direction, not twice. And then put the head back down. After the stretches of the neck, then we'll be going on to the face. We'll start at the top of the face on the forehead. Just slide the thumbs out, cross the eyebrows to the temples, make a little circle in the temple, and then slide it out the middle of the forehead to the temples and little circles and then slide it out the top of the forehead to the temples in little circles. There's generally plenty of oil. The face is the oiliest part of the body. There's plenty of oil for your thumbs to slide smoothly out. Then we're going down the side of the nose to underneath. You can feel the cheekbones coming along here underneath. Slide your thumbs to underneath the cheekbones all the way out to the ear twice. Down and slide out. Then across on the chin line, just slide your finger and your thumbs out the jaw. Once, out the jaw, twice. And then drop your fingers down on both sides to the ears and just press the ears in five positions along the outer edge. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to do a little extra stretch on the neck to finish up. Take the towel that your partner has been resting on, make sure it's long enough, and wrap it around the top of the face and don't cut off their breathing. Just stretch out, hook it back behind the the neutral ridge back there and stretch the head out slightly and fold it across their eyes so that the light doesn't get into their eyes. 
and next we're ready for the chest. With our four fingers pressing down in three different positions, pressing toward each other, pressing straight down to the feet, and pressing out to the corners of the shoulders. These are on top of the pectoralis muscle here, and we're going to be doing in three rotations positions, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now as you do these, notice where the pressure comes from. It's not pressing down with your whole hand, but rather you lift the hand up, which presses the flat four fingers down, not just the tips of the fingers, but all the flat of the four fingers down, as high as you can, and that's what puts the pressure on. So you lift up first, then you rotate, one, two, three, second position, two, three, third position, three. Repeat, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now we're going to do the parts of the arms that we left out before. First, we'll go to the left side. We always start on the left side. So move your knees off to the left side of the head. We're going to work on the bicep. We left that off the, of the back when we're working on the back side of the arm. Just turn the, the elbow out. And so generally most people lay with their arms with the elbow to the inside underneath. We're going to turn the elbow out so that the bicep drops to the inside. Reach underneath for the uh, squeezes, squeeze rotations. Squeeze the muscle away from the bone. One, two, three. Second position. One, two, three, and third. One, two, three. Back up to the top again. One, two, three. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Now, just turn the hand over and expose the inside of the arm. You bring it between your knees again and with your outside, the outside palm of your hand, so it'll be the same arm, so it's my left palm on his left arm, pressing down, starting not quite at the crease, just below the crease of the arm, pressing into the muscle, this is the flexor compartment here, five positions all the way down to the wrist. The last position's on the wrist, and you're gonna, just gonna press straight down. One, two, three, four, five, again, one, two, three, four, five. And now we'll go on to the hand, and we'll do the hand the same way we did the back of the hand. Put the heels of our hand together, our wrist together, and spread the hand out once, spread it out twice, and then stroke with the outsides of our thumbs down in between the metacarpals, the two hand bones on the outside once, twice, and then the inside set, once, twice. And then there's also a point on this side, on the pad of the thumb, that if you press on the fleshy portion toward the metacarpal, halfway down, so halfway, here's the, the bottom of the metacarpal, top of the metacarpal, halfway down, pressing into the fleshy part toward the metacarpal once and twice. This time your hand's on the outside, not in here, in between the thumb and the first finger, but on the outside a little bit different from the other side. We're going to finish the arm by doing the fingers. And we're going to do a caterpillar rub on each of the fingers, starting on the thumb and then working toward the little finger. The caterpillar rub is kind of like rubbing two coins together between your thumb and your forefinger. You curl the forefinger around the back side of the thumb and the top of your thumb goes on the front of the thumb. And we'll do both the front and back, and then the sides of the thumb. So first, it's the front and the back of the thumb, and back and forth, caterpillar rub down to the tip of the thumb, and then go back to the base, turn your hand over to the sides, and caterpillar rub down the sides of the thumb, once each. And then just give it a little pull, a little bit of a tug. Same thing with the index finger. Start at the base and caterpillar rub down to the tip. Go back, turn it to the side, caterpillar rub down the sides, and give it a tug. And then on the middle finger, top and bottom, rub the sides and tug. And then you can change hands if you want and do the top and bottom 
of the ring finger, sides, and tug, and of the little finger, top and bottom, sides, and tug. Finish off with a stretch like we did on the other side, but instead of over the head, we're going to go straight up. Hold the back of the hand the same way we did on the other side with the thumbs parallel to each other on the hand. Stretch the hand up and give it a little vibration and then lay it down next to the side. We're going to do the same thing on the other side of the arm. Remember to pull the elbow out first to the side. Work the bicep. Turn the hand over and work the inside of the arm. Do the hand spread twice. Stroke the metacarpals twice each set of lines. Press the point on the thumb pad twice and then do the caterpillar rubs starting with the thumb and out the other fingers changing to the other hand. Finish with the stretch up a little vibration and drop the hand down to the side. And now we're ready to go down to the lower leg. After you finish practicing the arms, then we can move down to the leg. We'll start on the left leg again and be opposite the knee, positioned ourselves, and we're going to press along the top of the quadricep muscle, which runs from the hip all the way to the knee. Don't press on the knee at all on this case. Stay off of the kneecap, which is called the patella. Put your fingers to the outside and use the heel of the hand as your line running straight down here. And we're just going to do a straight press, rocking forward one, two, three in the middle, four, and five. Again at the top, one, two, three, four, five. So you can feel you're pressing directly into the top of the bone through the quadricep muscles. Now we're going to do what we call a little bicycle pedal around either side of the knee. You keep your wrist pointing up in the air, not down this way, but up in the air, and just cup beneath the kneecap, beneath the patella, with the heel of your hand on both sides. And you press in with the heel of the hand, just nice, it fits very nicely around there, and make a bicycle pedal motion, which goes like this in circles on either side. And you can do it pretty vigorously around that way. Okay. Then we'll go to the outside of the thigh. Bring your legs around, sit opposite the knee, and we'll press with the palm of our hand. The five positions on the side of the thigh, we'll press with the heel of the hand all the way down to just above the knee. Now it'd be helpful if you just cup the knee on the side with your other hand and push it over to the inside a little bit. That brings the line up. You're going to be pushing into the bone through the muscle into the bone in five positions down to your other hand. Pressing one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Here's a good place to mention one problem that you might encounter. Sometimes when people are pressing with the heel of the hand, they'll inadvertently squeeze down with their fingers. They'll keep tension in their fingers. You want to keep your hand relaxed. All of the pressure comes directly through the heel of your hand from the wrist, from the elbow. So try and keep your arms straight down here and pressing straight in and relax the fingers on top. Down, down, down. If you feel yourself squeezing in like this or if your partner feels you squeezing in, your partner should let you know to relax your fingers and just press straight in. Then we'll do a rub above and below the patella and just plant your hand from the index finger through the thumb all along the webbing below the patella and the other hand above the patella. Put a little pressure on there and rub back and forth. Don't slide along the skin. You're rubbing the skin over the bone once again back and forth. Then reach to the inside of the knee and bend the knee up. Bring the foot in and expose the inner thigh. Then we'll start working on the inner thigh with the same type of palm press we used on the top of the thigh. That's one, two, three, four, five to the knee, not on the knee, just to it. One, two, three, four, five. Change hands and do the same palm press down the calf muscle. 
to the heel, pressing one, two, three, four, five on the heel. It's one, two, three, four, five on the heel. This line is off the bone. Here's the bone. You can feel the tibia running along here. You don't want to be on the tibia. You want to be off the bone, but not right on the flat of the muscle. This is kind of where the space between the tibia and the muscle lies, pressing down, down, and down. Then lift the knee up and straighten the leg out. It's much more comfortable to bend the knee up when you're bringing it to the outside or lifting it up to straighten it out than it is to just drag it. Dragging it like this puts a strain on the knee, so be sure you don't do that. Be sure you lift the knee up, then straighten the leg out to the side. And now let's move down to the lower leg. On the lower leg, we're going to be doing two lines. The first line runs along the tibialis anterior muscle, which is just off, if you feel the crest of the, sh we call this the shin bone up here, the crest of the tibia, just off to the outer edge will be a muscle. You can find it by moving your fingers back and forth. On the crest, on the top of that muscle, just pressing directly in, is where the first line will start. We'll start with our fingers up against the bottom of the patella, and your thumb will begin the first point just underneath your index finger, pressing in one, two, three, four, and five. To make it easier to reach this line and the next line that we'll be doing down a little bit further, make sure that you push the foot over to the inside, stretch it to the inside a little bit, and that brings the line up more in line with your shoulder and your arm. Repeat the same line, one, two, three, four, and five. The second line pushes directly into the side of the fibula. This little bump here that you can feel, bone bump, is the head of the fibula. It's about opposite the first point of the first line. So you can slide your thumb up until it hits the head of the fibula and press directly below it. In from the side, five points all along the fibula, pressing directly into the side, except for the last point. Down at the last point down here, where you feel the bone and no muscle on top of it, come above the fibula and press just a little bit above it into the muscle. Five points, starting at the head of the fibula, slide your thumb up. One, two, three, four, five, just above the bone this time. One, two, three, four, and five. Then we're going to squeeze the ankle points again just like we did on the back side of the body. In front of the ankle bones, thumb on one side and fingers on the other. Squeezing together with both fingers and thumbs at the same time, one on top of the other. Squeeze once and squeeze twice. Then slide around so you're facing the foot and we're going to spread the foot the same way we spread the hands. With the heels of the hand together, spreading out once spreading out twice. And then the toes, we're going to do a little fan breezing back and forth. Just cup the palm of your hand over the tips of the toes. Press in slightly, press in a little bit into the toes, and flop the toes back and forth, like this. So you're doing all five toes at the same time. Then place the heel of your hand on the toes grab them around the bottom side and stretch them over. Sometimes you may hear some popping. Then hold the heel of your hand underneath the tips of the toes and just stretch them back in the other direction. And then we'll stretch the whole leg. Turn yourself around. Put your hand underneath the knee. Lift the knee up. And your other hand is holding on, is cupping the foot. And we're going to press the knee down to the chest. You might want to bring your other leg up for balance and just with a straight arm, just push the knee toward the chest as far as it's comfortable for your partner. Then at the same time, if you want to do an extra stretch, you can press down on the foot, on the top of the foot, toward the hip in that direction. Always checking with your partner to see if it's comfortable for them. One more stretch that we're going to do, we're going to cup the heel with our hand, straighten the leg out, 
cup the other hand on top of the kneecap, the patella, and just stretch the leg straight up in the air, as high as is comfortable for them. Bring the leg back down. And let's start on the second side. After you finish the right leg, you can come up to the right side of the abdomen and we'll close the whole massage. To do the abdomen, we're going to rub with the heel of our hand and find where the bottom of the rib cage and in between the two hip bones are as we rub around. So you can start over in this corner closest to you at the hip, find the hip bone, rub around in a circle clockwise direction up underneath the ribs, not on top of the ribs, just underneath, in a circle, across, down to the inside of the other hip and over. And once, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to press starting in the inside of the hip in three positions up to the bottom of the rib cage and then across to the other side of the rib cage and then down to the other hip. Pressing once inside the hip, once halfway up, once underneath the rib cage, once in the middle, on the other side of the rib cage, press halfway down, and then inside the hip. Come across to the middle and press up three positions. Again, inside the hip, halfway up, underneath the rib cage, in the middle, underneath the rib cage on the other side, halfway down, inside the hip, across to the middle, and two more positions up the middle. All pressing with the heel of the hand. Then, position yourself around to the side, reach underneath the body and you're going to be stretching out the lower muscle in the back which is the latissimus dorsi muscle and pulling it up from the side. Just stretch it up once, twice, and three times. Then you can rock the body back and forth, get a nice vigorous rock at the waist and at the hips, get the whole body moving nice and vigorously. And then slowly, very gently, without stopping abruptly, make the rocks back and forth smaller and smaller until it comes to an end. And when the body stops and your hand stops, you've finished the whole massage. Take your time with the first half of the tape. Practice the sequences, the point locations, and the techniques until you feel comfortable with them. Then begin the second half of the tape and we can practice along together for the full massage. Now I'm going to demonstrate the entire massage sequence from the beginning to the end at about the same pace that the massage would normally be done at. So first we begin by straddling the body with the foot up by the arm and the knee back by the hip. Rocking forward into the palm press, it's one and two, and three, and four, and five at the waist. Repeat. The top, it's one. Exhale out for two, and three in the middle, four, and five. Then with the thumbs, starting opposite the spine of the scapula, pressing 13 points in the back, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven is halfway down, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Keep going now on the sacrum. Four more points. Fingers behind. One, two, three, and four. Up at the top again. Begin with one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven halfway down, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, Right above the pelvis is 13. Fingers behind the sacrum. One, two, three, and four. And then bring your leg back for the three waist point presses. One, two, and three. And again, it's one, elbows out, two, and three. Hip points. One, two, three, second, two, three, third, two. Again, it's one, two, three, second, two, three, one, two, three. And get ready for the leg now. Facing the feet with the forearm press all the way down the back of the thigh, five positions. It's one, two, three, four, and lightly on the back of the knee is five. One, two, three, four, and five. Then rolling arm press, one, two, three, one, two, three. Middle position, three, one, two, three, and very light on the back of the knee. Again, two, three, second, two, three, third, three, fourth, and light on the back of the knee. Move down for the calf. Same sequence, pressing with the arm at the top of the calf, one, two, three in the middle, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Rolling arm press, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, middle, four, two, three, and five, two, three. Again, one, two, three, second, two, three, third, fourth, and fifth. From the side, the rolling squeeze, five positions, one, two, three, one, two, three, middle, four, two, three, and five, again, two, three, second, two, three, third, four, and five, two, three, squeeze the ankle twice, come around to the side, and squeeze the heel twice. And starting on the foot, five points on five lines. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, in the arch. Five, one, two, three. Second line, five, one, two, three, four, five. Third in the middle, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Fourth line, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and fifth on the outside, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. On the pads of the toes, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Stretch the foot up and down to the hip and toes down to the floor, stretching out the Achilles tendon. Come back, straighten the leg out, Pull it, lift the knee up, set the leg down. Go over to the other side. Kneeling at the hip, starting on the back of the thigh. It's one, two, three, four, five in the knee. One, two, three in the middle, four, five lightly. One, two, three, one, two, three. Middle position, fourth position, and on the knee. Three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, lightly. Move down to the knee, on the calf, it's press. At the top, two, in the middle, four, and on the Achilles. First position, second, third, fourth, and on the Achilles. 
Rolling arm press, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Again, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, two, and on the Achilles, two, three. From the side, do the rolling arm squeeze. It's one, two, three, second, two, three, third, two, three, fourth, and on the Achilles. Again, two, three, second position, third, three, fourth, two, three, Achilles, two, three. Squeeze the ankles, blow the ankles twice. Put the foot up, move down to the bottom, and squeeze the heel twice. And on the bottom of the foot, Pressing five points, five lines. One, two, three, four, five. Second, two, three, four, five. Second line, two, three, four, five. Second time, two, three, four, five. Middle line, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Fourth line, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And last line, two, three, four, five. Five, one, two, three, four, five. On the pads of the toes, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Stretch the foot down to the hip and stretch the toes down to the floor, stretching out the Achilles tendon. Come back, stretch the whole leg out, lift the knee up, set the leg down, and you're ready to go to the front of the body, starting on the shoulders. Come up the head. And we're starting with the palm press across the top of the trapezius, top of the shoulders, pressing in one, two, three, one, two, three. Then with the thumbs, two, three, one, two, three. Then down the back, along the vertebrae, it's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and five. Around the scapula, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, and five. Along the top of the spine of the scapula, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Finish the shoulders, go out to the left arm, step out to the side, opening up the deltoid first in three positions with the squeezing press, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Repeat, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And on the tricep, squeeze it open. One, two, three, second, two, three, third. Again, one, two, three, middle, two, three, third, two, three. And then on the thumb side, the forearm, one, two, three, four, five. And the wrist, one, two, three, four, five. Between the bones, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Squeeze the wrist twice, spread the hand twice, stroke down twice, inside metacarpals all the way to the webbing twice, press the point between the first and second metacarpal, and stretch out the arm, shake it, bring the arm back into position, put it down, move to the center again, now we're going to do the neck points, three lines, five points each line. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Second line, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And third, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And turn your head over to the other side, please. Bring the hair around with it. And do the neck on the second side. Three lines, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, second, two, three, four, five, again, two, three, four, five, and third, 
two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And that's the next sequence. We're ready for the second arm, starting to open the deltoid. Move over to the right side and open with a one, two, three, second position, three, third, two, three, top, two, three, second, third, two, three. Tricep next, same three positions, one, two, three, two, three, one, two, three, again, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then the forearm, thumb side first, thumb pointing up toward the elbow first, one, two, three, four, Five in the wrist, one, two, three, four, five. Between the bones, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Squeeze the wrist twice, spread the hand twice, stroke down twice, inside metacarpals all the way to the webbing. Press the point between the first and second metacarpal. Bring the arm over the head, stretch it out. A little bit of shake, and the arm back, and now we'll start on the closing sequence. Same way as we open the shoulders to begin with, palm press, two, three, one, two, three. Rub underneath the scapula, one, two, three. Step over the arm, get ready for the final close, pressing one, two, 13 points, three, Four and five and six and seven is halfway down and eight and nine and ten and eleven and twelve and thirteen. Then onto the sacrum, four points one, two, three and four. Then we're going to final close with the percussions, elbows out to the side, clasp hands together, clockwise direction down, and up, and down, and up, cupped hands percussion, clockwise direction down, over, up, down the back straps, over, and up, back and forth, down, and turn over please. And we'll now start on the front side of the body. Start with the neck stretches, bridging the neck first, lifting up, make a bridge, pull it toward you and down. Up, toward you and down, up, toward you and down, four and five. Again, one, two, three, four and five. Then the cross arm stretch, cup the shoulders, one on either side, stretch it up. Bring the head down, stretch it to one shoulder, and the ear to the other shoulder, and bring it down. And the face, sliding the thumbs across the eyebrow line to the temple, across the middle of the forehead to the temple, and on the hairline to the temple. Then down alongside the nose, underneath the cheekbones, all the way to the ear. Twice. Down. Then along the chin line. All the way out. The jaw. Twice. Chin. All the way out the ears. Pressing. Two, three, four, five. Press. Two, three, four, five. And the scalp. And one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The other side, it's one, two, three, second, third, two, three, fourth, and fifth, two, three. Both sides, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and five, two, three. You're going to do a little stretch. With the towel and down and then do the chest. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Again. One, two, three, one, two, three. Starting on the left side, moving over. 
Bring the elbow out, the bicep. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Again. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Bring the hand over the top and pressing. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And the forearm, spread the hand twice. Stroke the outside metacarpals once, twice. The inside metacarpals two times. And press the point on the thumb pad twice. And caterpillars pull. Caterpillars pull. Caterpillars pull. Caterpillars pull. Stretch the arms straight up in the air, vibrate, and set it down by the side. Go to the other side. Bring the arm up, elbow out for the bicep. One, two, three, one, two, three, three positions. First, second, and third. Bring the arm over, and press one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Spread, spread, stroke, 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 press point, press point, caterpillar, sides, pull, sides, pull, sides, pull, change, Stretching up, vibrate, and put the arm down, and move to the leg, lower leg. Starting at the knee first, on top of the thigh, pressing down the quadriceps, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Bicycle pedal the knee, turn sideways, Push the knee over, pressing into the side of the leg. One, two, three, four, five. Into the femur. Two, three, four, five. Rub above and below the knee. Expose the inside of the leg. Do the inside of the thigh. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. With the other hand, do the calf. Two, three, four. On the heel. One, two, three, four, five. In the heel. Lift the knee up, straighten the leg out. Do the side of the calf. First line, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Second line, into the bone, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Squeeze the ankle below the bones twice. Turn around, spread the foot twice. And fan the toes and stretch them over, stretch them back, lift the foot up, bend the knee, stretch the knee to the chest, and the foot to the hip, straighten the leg out, and stretch the leg up, that is comfortable, and bring the leg back down. Go around to the other side. And start on leg number two. Pressing, top of the quadricep. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. Bicycle pedal. And from the side, it's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Rope above and below the kneecap. Bring the leg out, expose the inside of the thigh. Press one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Press the calf. One, two, three, four, five. And the heel. One, two, three, four, five. Bring the knee up. Straighten the leg out. Do the outside of the calf muscles. One, two.
two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Second line, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Squeeze the ankle below the ankle bones. Spread the foot twice. And fan the toes. Stretch the toes over. Stretch the toes back. Bend the knee to the chest. And the foot to the hip. Straighten the leg out. Stretch the leg straight up as high as it'll go. And bring the leg back down. Come up to the abdomen. And from the side, open the abdomen. One, between the hips, below the rib cage. Two, three, just with the heel of your hand. Four, and five. And then pressing one, in the hip. Two, halfway up. Three underneath the rib cage. Four in the middle. Five under the rib cage on the other side. Six, halfway down. Seven between the hip. The middle line, one, two, and three. Repeat, starting in the hip, halfway up, under the ribs, in the middle, under the ribs, halfway down, next to the hip, in the middle, two, and three. Reach underneath and lift up the latissimus dorsi muscles three times and rock back and forth. Whole body rocking. And slowly come to a halt and finish the massage. That's the end of the sequence.